Yeah. Yes. Uh, please put your hands together for all our panelists. We have uh, Lisa Schwartz, Bradley Friedman, Matt Dennison, Jason Lucas, from LabHD, and Jennifer Chu. Come on up. Only a penling, that's right. A very special bit. Can anyone still stand? I think there's still a few seats around, so feel free to filter in. everybody for joining us. Welcome panelists. Um, so yeah, that was kind of everyone's work sampling, uh, which I thought was actually a pretty good little sample because there was a pretty diverse uh, range of stuff. And that's kind of what YouTube is. It's kind of, I don't know where else you kind of see all of that different content in the same place. So, uh, but maybe everyone, we can just go down the line and you can just introduce yourself and um, just talk a little bit how you got, like how did you get into YouTube? How did you start on this thing? Um, hi, I'm Jen. I'm a beauty and lifestyle blogger. Um, I started my channel because I had a really bad office job that I hated. And I just needed something to do on the side to kind of help me have an outlet, a creative outlet. And YouTube was that for me. So I started making videos in 2012, short random videos on the weekend after my job, and then it just started to grow from there. And um, about four years ago is when I started full time on YouTube, and here I am today, and that's how I got started. Hi, I'm Matt. Um, I think we're thoroughly introduced in our video, but uh, as we mentioned, we got into it by accident. Um, Jason and I uh, were best friends. We used to mountain bike. Well, I was still mountain bike, avid mountain bikers, and we used to make films in, in high school. Um, just riding bikes around and that's how we got into using cameras and we were bored one winter when it was too wet to ride bikes and so we decided eh, let's try to make something funny so we put it on Facebook and it got five likes and we were stoked and then um, we decided to make some more videos put it on Facebook someone suggested hey are, have you considered uh, becoming a putting them on YouTube and becoming a YouTube partner and we're, at, and we're like what's that and we we're like well you can get paid and I was like what really no way and uh, so we eventually uploaded uh, videos months later, and somewhere down the line we got our first check for nine cents. <laughs> and they still keep coming for nine cents. Uh, yeah, I'm Jason. Uh, Matt pretty much covered it all. No further comment. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa. Uh, about ten years ago I graduated college and I moved back to LA, that's where I'm from. And I started auditioning, I was going to be an actor. Uh, and I auditioned for the Fine Brothers for a Comedy Central pilot, and I got it. And you guys know the Fine Brothers, they're like Mr. and Mr. YouTube. So they explained to me what YouTube was, and they were putting me in all their sketches, and eventually Benny and Rafi sat down and built my channel for me and said, you should do this, and they taught me how to edit. And uh, here we are. I love Vancouver. <laughs> I'm Brad Fries, I'm also a beauty and fashion blogger. Uh, and, uh, Give a lot of really good tips on my channel. Um, skin. Oh. <laughs> All right. Seems like a bad idea. I'd be great for the rest of us. But you should uh, explain that. That's funny. Yeah, so uh, I'm long-winded also, so I'm actually wearing a shock collar. This will never go on the dog, but there's somebody out there that uh, lets me know I'm being a little bit too long-winded. So. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I was not ready for it. I was not ready for it. So Bradley, let me ask you a lot more questions here. <laughs> so well, how do you, like, so how does, like obviously everyone's kind of got different content and a different approach and maybe we can just talk a little bit about how you guys like approach creating for YouTube because it's kind of this thing where it's, uh, we're all our own boss and we're really accountable just to ourselves and to the fans so like how do you, like, how, how do you approach your channel? Like, how do you, uh, how do you look at it? Like, how do you go about producing? Um, for me, I approach it as a, a place for 
need to share my tips and tricks because that's what I do. I do beauty and lifestyle, and there is a demographic and a, a little target audience for that. So I do. I just kind of look at it as a platform where I can um, be creative, uh, a place where I can help people look and feel their best, and also it's uh, where I make my living. Yeah. Well, I think our approach is always evolving because uh, I mean, YouTube's evolving, internet's evolving, comedy is always evolving, and. You know our, our actual approach of how we make videos it's, it's, it's always different but um, you know we when it comes to what videos we actually end up making you know we just we might come up with a video that's topical we've had come up with we've had some topical ideas in the past that um, uh, one example is video game um, a related uh, comedy that we made um, for a video game called Diablo we did a really topical video got 10 million views so that was like a video that we thought, okay, well let's do it because this is really relevant right now. Yeah. But there's a lot of videos that we have um, in our bank that are just videos that we want to just really create because they're things that we really believe in and we think are funny. Um, so I mean, there's a variety of different approaches that we take. And like half the time you're right. Half the time you're right that it's funny. Uh, if we're lucky. Um, yeah, like what Matt said, I think whenever we're creating, we're just, we just want to be passionate about it. We've, we've done videos about rock climbers and hockey players and skiers, and while we're, we're actually not those things, we do a ton of research, and we like to think we put our own spin on everything, put our own humor into the video, and that when we're filming, we're, we're extremely passionate about it, and uh, I think that helps the end product to feel a little better, for sure. Um, I think that there's a lot of it is passion, and then also, it's a business too. I put out a video Monday through Friday and I have a schedule, like a very specific schedule about what happens each day. And I also think you kind of like you were saying, have to follow the trends on what's popular. When I started, it was like all sketches. So we're doing characters and crazy characters. Then all of a sudden it became vlogs. So then all of a sudden you're in my bathroom with me, which is weird. And then it was like challenges. So all of a sudden we're eating cinnamon. And then it became parodies. So I was doing a million parodies that were doing very well. And now it's this like weird dark, at least in the genre, like I'm involved with like weird dark stories. Like I'm talking about murders and weird, you know, conspiracy theories and things like that. So I think it's just being aware of what your audience is enjoying and watching and kind of following the trends and then putting your own spin on it so you're not hating what you're doing, but it's still part of you, but it's still part of what people are uh, enjoying and that's how you kind of continue to be relevant, I think. Uh. Um, we're finding that on our channel, uh, we are doing helicopter stuff and we are always focused very much on the athlete and the camera faced out. Uh, and uh, what we're finding now is um, people can get visuals, they can get amazing cinematics anywhere. You can go onto Helly Hansen's website, you can go onto um, somebody with a slider who's got a good DSLR. So what we're finding is that people, they like visuals, they want to see visuals, but if they don't care about the person creating the content, they don't care about visuals, they don't care about whatever it is you're doing, it doesn't matter. So uh, we're starting to, to get into vlogging and uh, producing weekly content, which is tough, you know, turning the camera back on yourself and putting your personality and, and some humor into things. But we're finding that people, um, you have to do it. You have to let people in to bring people along with you and what other things that you might be wanting to do. And then how do you, like, how do you guys, because I think that's a big thing about YouTube, is it's this balance, I find, like, between, like, quantity and quality, and there's, you're dealing with, like YouTube's just a tech company, so they deal in like analytics and, and things like that, so, and algorithms. So you're trying to like create the best content you can and the stuff that you're most inspired to do, but you're also like playing within this ecosystem that is like you know run by robots that will eventually overtake us and eat our bodies and harvest them for fuel. <coughs> Dark story, <laughs> uh, or so I've heard. But so how do you, uh, like how do you find that balance? Like you were saying like that when we were talking, like you had like a video that you were like, this is so shit, how do I, like should I even put it up or whatever? Like, Yeah, it was weird for us. Um, our lowest effort video was a few weeks ago and it was, it was raining, we couldn't fly, we couldn't do anything, we didn't have anything to share. We had lots of things coming so we did a Q&A and there's fan noises and then we tried to do like an Oreo dunk where we <laughs> dunk the Oreos into our mouth and the drones crashed over our heads and it was it was bad. And uh, we were sitting there at three o'clock in the morning about to edit, like upload, and we're like, I don't want to put this out. Like, And the funny thing is, is for the amount of views, it's one of our highest liked videos. And it was 
such a terrible piece of content and but that's the thing is that you you have to try everything and you have to keep uploading and you have to keep putting out content and doing things that you might not want to do because I mean maybe that's our new genre is just terrible stuff and maybe that'll be what we'll do from now on. That's a good channel name. I think you should start that. Terrible, terrible stuff. It's kind terrible, of I fucking hate that spin off. Yeah. <laughs> Toby Turner once told me when I maybe should not say this, he was like quantity over quality, which is crazy. For a while, he was like pumping out like so many videos, he was going crazy. and he owns like three homes. So, but like I feel like that's a little crazy that for works. me. But I think just the key is like consistency. So whether you're like I upload once a month, then upload once a month. So at least your audience knows where to come and what to expect. So I think just being consistent and and then so like so Lisa, how do you? Um, because you do like, you kind of operate on like a number of levels, like you have like your channel that you do every day, which is like more vlog, like first person stuff, and then you have like full on like television shows, and then how do those two things kind of work together, or uh, like compete for your attention and also benefit from each other? I think that YouTube started out as just like a hobby, and then it became a passion project, then it became a job, and then it became my foot in to doing what I really want to do, which is produce and act and create. So now I look at it as I'm so grateful for it and I really enjoy the stuff that I'm making, but I more enjoy the opportunities that are coming from it. So I'm treating it as sort of like a business, hoping to keep it afloat so that when I go into these meetings and they look at my channel, that they see that the numbers are there, whether or not, I mean, the content at some times, like you were saying, is like not your proudest moments, but you're using that audience and those numbers and that pull to ultimately get to your end goal. So now it's just sort of like this upkeep thing that I want to make sure the channel is growing and, and staying afloat, but I'm doing some content that maybe I don't necessarily like. It's yeah. not like that. That's my pride and joy, you know yeah. what I mean? And this is now just like this cool company that I built, essentially. Yeah. Does that make me sound like an asshole? <laughs> a little bit. You guys know that, right? Good way. It's a business. It's In a, a show business. business. YouTube has yeah. become a business. And yeah. I feel like if you really want to like, grow from it then you treat it as a business and you never know it i'm trying to milk it now while i can because you never know tomorrow people might stop watching and then you don't have that resource for yourself anymore so it's bridging that gap as fast as you can yeah yeah and like so how do we like on that uh, on the business side like how are you guys all uh approaching that and like let it like i know like Matt and Jason, you guys are like have a, like a full on merch operation that you're doing now maybe you can talk a bit about that yeah uh well Actually, as we learned, the key to having a successful online business is multiple revenue streams. So whether it's... Or uh, MRS, as it's called. Yes. I just made that up. Did you learn that from the sideboards? <laughs> um, but to add on to what you were saying, um, YouTube, like, it, it is, it is, a lot of it is exploiting um, the algorithms. And, um, you know, there's a couple different approaches that you can take. You can do the stuff that you want to make that you think is funny, that you think is going to do well. Or you could get into those algorithms where like, oh, this is going to come up in related searches. This is going to pop up like up top of Google when people are searching this. Like there's, or you can find the way to combine them. But um, business-wise, I agree with Lisa that it's definitely about consistency. And then, and I think that's actually a downfall of our channel is that over our seven years, we've never actually consistently, we've never stuck to a schedule. And our fans actually don't quite know what to expect because we always make, we always kind of just do things at our own pace because, you know, we, we hardly know what to expect. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Side words. Jet, how, how often do you uh, release a video? Um, I used to upload twice a week, and now I'm down to once a week. And it really hasn't changed um, my growth at all. If anything, I think when I um, started to have a schedule is when my channel started to grow rapidly. Um, and also the content too. Now I'm posting regularly and I have a videographer who helps me. And just like what Lisa was saying, it's so important to be consistent on YouTube because it, it gives that, it gives your viewers, you know, oh, you know, Jen's posting on Friday, I'm gonna, you know, be sure I'm online at nine to watch your video. And that's like something that you kind of grow into a, I guess, a schedule for your viewers and that's really important on YouTube, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. And then how are you, like, are, are you finding a lot of success on, on other networks, social networks, social platforms, like Instagram and things like that? Um, and how are you using those uh, for, yeah. to build in like an off of your YouTube channel? Yeah, for beauty and makeup, it's actually a huge thing because for me, my two top um, social platforms are Snapchat and Instagram. 
Snapchat being more for the engagement process because a lot of viewers who watch my channel will go on my Snapchat and be like, hey Jan, loved your video, or they'll be like, oh, that video, I don't know about that video, and um, they'll just like give me suggestion. It's a really direct way to connect with your viewers. Whereas with Instagram, it's also really good. There's an Instagram story, but <coughs> for me, I think the fact that you can tag certain brands or people that you collaborate with is a great way to also um, generate revenue for your channel. Yeah. You have like the nicest uh, fans. They heckle you passive aggressively. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky, I guess. Else is just like, you should die. <laughs> this is fake and gay. Yeah, but you <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. How, how about you guys? How are you using other? Because uh, every, it's fascinating to me. Like when we started a few years ago, a YouTube video would kind of wind up on everything. Like it would get shared on Twitter, it would get shared on Facebook, Instagram. I don't think existed, but um, now it's like they're all they all seem like proprietary. It's like things that are on Facebook just kind of stay on Facebook, and things that are on YouTube are on YouTube and Instagram. The same thing. Have you guys noticed? Something like that, and how does that, like, how are you navigating that in your business? I think each platform has their own benefit. Snapchat is a great way to create engagement with your fans. You can talk to your fans. You can, you know, kind of like become friends with them. Um, Facebook is like probably the number one way over YouTube to get your videos watched because the the video player is just pushed to everybody's feed. Um, for us, we. Uh, we only chose to upload our videos to Facebook last year, I think at the beginning of last year, and it was like we had like 10,000 fans over six years or something like that, and we decided to upload our videos, and then we grew to 150,000, and we're getting like 10 million views on our videos just because it's pushed to everybody's, to, all, to everybody's feed. It's just, there's so much visibility on Facebook, and it's a great way, a great way to get your videos watched. Yeah. Um, but in terms of social media for us, we're not too heavy on it. We never really have because when we make videos, we try to approach it as like we, you know, we've always kind of said that we try to make viral videos. We know that we we try to make videos that we know there's going to be a niche audience that it's going to go gangbusters in that group. So we don't really, it's not really reliant on us. Like it'll do well whether we post it or not. People will find it and it'll spread within that niche. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm just really glad Jason uh, could be here today. Um, just wanted to see you. You're the most excited. I was most excited to see you. Who? You. You were? Yeah. Why? Like, oh, Jason's here. I don't. Now I'm questioning that. I have the yeah. same reaction. Uh, anyways, Lisa. <laughs> I feel like I'm learning stuff. I'm not good at it. Facebook specifically, like. Now I'm inspired to get on there and do that. I just like interact with my grandma on Facebook. She's great on Facebook, you guys. It's amazing. Um, I like in I Instagram. I just feel like, like you said, it's good for brands, even though no brand wants to rep me because I drop the F-bomb all the time. Um, what I do now is on Twitter, I'll ask for suggestions at the end of my videos for the next video. So at the beginning of every video, I'm like, thanks so-and-so on Twitter for the suggestion. And we screen grab it, and it just generates more interaction. and sort of this like community, but again, I don't know, I'm not the right that's person. great, like when you can kind of like cross, like cross pollinate on those platforms a little bit, it seems like a smart thing. I'm yeah. saying you're very smart. I'm Lisa. very smart. You're very smart. <laughs> I find there's a, uh, they are, they're each silo and it's hard to get crossover between them. Um, did a, a video with Bentley uh, and it got a hundred and some odd million views on Unilab's Facebook and it translated into a point about 0.0001% um, to um, the other, I'm just gonna let him go over there. Um, it uh, translated about like literally less than 1% uh, to Bentley's channel or to um, Bentley's Instagram or anywhere else. Um, I think to Matt's point about um, multiple revenue streams or stuff, YouTube changes things. Like they'll just all of a sudden change things and you won't know when or why or how and all of a sudden your views just drop and you stop getting engagement. Um, so being active in the other spaces though is important if you want to build a channel because you never know when everything is just going to change. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. You feel like in a lot of ways you're on, uh, totally getting up stage. <laughs> 
So Bentley, what's the, what do you think is most difficult about creating for YouTube? <laughs> Talk like this now. Uh, yeah, but I think like jumping off on that, like it, it is an interesting kind of conundrum as a as a like a creator on these social networks, where in a lot of ways you feel like you're totally in charge of your own uh, existence and your own career because you can like make whatever you want, you can make it whenever you want, and at the same time you're at the mercy of like these algorithms and things that can change just randomly based on you know what. You know, the alien thought we should, or the, you know, the and, AI And thought. experiments, they'll just experiment. Yeah. Like, try something new for a month. And you don't know why it's coming, or why it's what's happening. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's interesting you talk about, like, the, the Unilad video that got a lot of traction, and then it didn't translate. Do you guys, do you put a lot of emphasis on collaborations with other creators? And how do you feel that has helped, or in, in any case hurt? Hurt you? Uh, yeah, we we've, we've collaborated. With, we put a pretty big emphasis on collaborating with people, especially like around Vancouver, Vancouver talent like yourself, who's way funnier and brings our videos to another level. So such a higher level. Such a higher level. Um, but I don't, your subscription levels go down after we do a video. I don't know why. I think it's us more than you. I must. They jump ship yeah. and then they go to you. You're like unsubscribe to this one, subscribe to that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it helps, right? Because obviously our two channels have very different audiences, and um, but they grow attached to our personalities, and and they get introduced to them via the collaboration. So I think it, it can only help, really. I mean, as long as you're both, it makes sense. Like the collaboration has to make sense. But like we just collaborated with uh, a local Vancouver Instagrammer for for our, a newer sketch that we're doing, and. It, the script is making fun of Instagrammers, so she actually made fun of herself. But she, it, it's really cool, and it, it's in a funny way, and it's, and like it just helps kind of everyone grow when you're all helping each other. We were fortunate to take part in a program at YouTube where we got to go to the YouTube Space LA and kind of attend YouTube school, I would call it. And their number one emphasis was always collaborations and how to make them work and how to effectively make collaborations work. And we actually, when we went down there, we had to do three videos, and we had to do a minimum of three, oh no, we had to do six videos, and I had three collaborations, I don't know, but very big emphasis at YouTube on collaborations from the company. How about you, Jen, do you? Um, For me, I guess I've done a few collaborations with other beauty YouTubers um, in Vancouver, but for the most part, I think it, it would just be for branding for me, um, like with Maybelline, like I work with Maybelline and L'Oreal, Cover girl, so those collaborations really work for my channel. Um, whereas with, I feel like with guys who do so many collaborations, it, it really works for them. But for my sort of niche area, it doesn't. It doesn't do. I don't think it, it works as well for for me. But yeah. yeah. And so, like the brands that you, how does like how does that come about? Like when you work with Maybelline or something, does that come out of? Like, do you seek them out, or do they come to you, or do you have like a company that you work? With? Um, I guess when I um, just. When I started full time in, in YouTube, uh, I was getting a lot of inquiries from brands and Maybelline and CoverGirl, PNG, a lot of them were bigger brands who had reached out to me first and they kind of, you know, they come to me, they ask, hey, do you like our products? We'll send you some products and so I'll use them, I'll try them. If I don't like them, I will not do anything with it. If I like it, then yeah, I'll work with them on a collaboration and that it just kind of goes from there. Yeah. And I think to add on to collaborations, like the word collaborations in this YouTube world means like, oh, is there another YouTuber that I can work with and we can cross promote our subscribers with? But with us, you know, we are running a business and we try our videos. We try to do them on low budget. We try to make them. We're we're very small crew. We're four guys. We're trying to make productions that, you know, are grand productions. Um, and collaboration expands outside of just the YouTube world for us. It's you know our friends, our photographers photographer friends, videographer friends, anybody who just wants to be a part of our uh, production and see what it's like and see how we do it. You know, it's collaborating is so much more than just, you know, how can I expand my numbers off <laughs> of you and how can you, how can I, how, yeah. vice versa. Yeah, it's like, well, that's what like uh, creativity, like you want to like be surrounded with like cool people that have great ideas and vision and want to do cool stuff too and that just makes better things. Absolutely. That's why we work with you because it's so cool. It's just so cool, right? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
I'm trying to, I'm trying to become your third person. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So the one mic thing is, yeah. and I'm just hogging this one. We're, um, our channel, we've only grown by collaborations. The only way that we're over 200,000 is by bigger YouTubers coming out and working with us. Um, we have like negative natural growth, uh, and it's crazy. Every time we upload a video, we lose 150 to 200 subscribers. I don't know what's going on. But um, the other thing about collaborations is um, you kind of have to capture once you do the collaboration you know you get the subscribers but you have to retain them and one of the biggest collaborations we did was with Casey Neistat we flew him around for a few days and we did four videos with him and we got a hundred thousand followers like that but uh, one of the things that happened okay, was um, one of the things that happened was um, <laughs> he uh, he took the cards we didn't get a chance to get our video out for about a month and a half uh, until after so we actually realized very little value from the collaboration in terms of but we had a lot of recognition people are like oh that's the guy that was in Casey's video and so on so just getting a collaboration doesn't always mean you're gonna get a big number from it and that you're now you're done you got to keep working you got to keep grinding you got to keep putting up content um, and we get a lot of people wanting to collaborate with us now oh, <laughs> I think it's an important idea what you said if you are going to do a collaboration to be super prepped especially if it's with someone bigger than you to like make sure your videos are coming out the same exact time make sure that your thumbnails are coordinated like really take advantage of that so that as soon as they see that they click to yours and it's ready to go because there's nothing worse than you know, it's a fickle audience, so they're not going to come back and check your cha your video again, you know? They've been at that person's channel and better be there ready to go. But I definitely, that's like my number one thing if you want to become a YouTuber is to collaborate. I mean, that's literally how I started by accident and, you know, working with all these like wonderful people at the time I didn't know. Um, so, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't do any better than collaborating, I think, if you want to build. Yeah, totally. How do you approach collaborations? I'm glad you asked that, Matt. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, we've kind of been limited in the collaborations that we've done a little bit, just because it's we've kind of had a format with sort of like characters and figuring out how to work them in to other people in has been a bit of, always a bit of a challenge. We've done it a few times, and uh, it's always really fun and, and been pretty successful for us overall. I think. Um, you know, we've always kind of approached, I think like you were saying, like just uh, just a, another ingredient of like people we want to work with. And obviously there is like the element of, uh, you know, being exposed to new audiences and um, and growing your channel like that. But ultimately you just kind of want to do, you know, work with cool people and, and you know, we're trying to do like, uh, we've done a few like, we did a great, one of my favorite things was like a collaboration with Mary Doodles, who's like this great artist. And she like animated the story, and it was something that didn't really make sense necessarily, like uh, on the surface of the channel. But it really came up with something like really cool, and was something very different. It wasn't like a huge boost. I think we both benefited from it, not in an enormous way, but it was just a great product. I was like, oh, that's something we could not have done on our own. Um, so that was pretty good. It also uh, makes things exciting because yeah. most of the time I'm like sitting at home by myself in front of a camera with no pants on, which is exciting. Yeah, exciting. But yeah. it's just like at least like, especially if you're doing so many videos a week, it's like nice to get some new energy and you know just break it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe we should open it up to the uh, to our very.